Konnichiwa, everyone. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. And today, we're going to talk about a group of teenage superheroes that I loved watching on Cartoon Network when I was young. And I'll bet you guys know who I'm talking about. The Teen Titans. Admit it, you knew I had to come to these guys sooner or later. Especially if you guys have seen me compare them to Big Hero 6 three years ago. Anyway, what started out as a DC superhero comic became a TV series created by Glenn Mirakami that ran on Kids WB and Cartoon Network from July 19, 2003 to January 16, 2006. Teen Titans became one of Cartoon Network's most beloved and critically acclaimed series, renowned for its character development and serious themes. During its run, the series was nominated for three Annie Awards and one Motion Picture Sound Editors Award. Now, I loved watching this show because of the action, the humor, the darkness, the animation, and that theme song provided by Puffy Amiyumi. But, unfortunately, I'm sad that the show is cancelled, and it became worse when Teen Titans Go! came along. Yeah, I'm one of those Teen Titans Go! haters, even if the original cast can't save it. However, Today I'm going to be blogging a movie where the Teen Titans go on a mission in the land of the rising sun. Airing on television on September 15th, 2006, the movie is Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo. Alright, let's get started. When a high-tech ninja attacks Titan's tower, Robin, Starfire, Cyborg, Raven, and Beast Boy spring into action. Robin finds out that the ninja was sent by a mysterious and menacing Japanese criminal known as Brusha Gun, and the Teen Titans travel to Tokyo to track the villain down. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, it was really incredible. It was dark, epic, thought-provoking, humorous, and really action-packed. But in order to explain why I love this movie, Let's move on to Mustang Notes. The film was written by David Slack, whom was the Teen Titans head writer. Now, in my opinion, like the show, the animation is really fantastic. I just love how the animators designed Tokyo, from the buildings to the streets, the atmosphere, everything. There are a few scenes that I like, other than the action and fight scenes. I like the scene where the Titans are chased by four criminals, Tokyo troopers, Japanese chefs, and a crowd of fangirls. Also, there are some parts that bring back fond memories from the show, but I'll talk about them later. But now, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought them to life. The leader of the Titans, Robin, is voiced by Scott Menville, who did have a small role in A Little Engine That Could, but he did have better roles in stuff like The Land Before Time 3, Final Fantasy X-2, and many others. Now, Robin used to be Batman's sidekick prior to the show, but anyway, in my opinion, I like Robin's use of martial arts that he uses when fighting bad guys. However, in this movie, Robin can be a tad stubborn, thinking that all he'll ever be is a hero and won't allow his teammates to take vacations. Still, I think that superheroes deserve a vacation once in a while. Heck, I have two long-distance vacations coming up this summer like San Francisco and Hershey, Pennsylvania. Anyway, back to Robin. During the movie, while investigating, 
he does manage to get himself into trouble with the Tokyo Troopers when he killed a Japanese criminal, which was actually a setup. Next up is Starfire, the Princess of Tamaran, voiced by Hinden Walsh. Who some Disney fans might know as the current voice of Alice. And voice Jenny McBride in The Secret of Nim 2. Now, to be honest, Starfire is one of my cartoon crushes. I mean, she's a very sweet girl, and I love the relationship between her and Robin. I also think Starfire is the most powerful member of the Titans with her green projectiles. My favorite scenes that she's involved with is when she plays a video game that's like a mix of Guitar Hero, DDR, and Whack-A-Mole. And I also like the scene when a little girl manages to help her overcome her depression, and when she and Robin finally kiss and become a couple. Oh, and uh, speaking of which, the scene where she kisses a Japanese boy in order to speak and read Japanese brings back memories of when she kisses Robin to learn English when they first met in the show. Next is the comic relief of the Titans, Beast Boy, voiced by Greg Sipes. Now, the reason why I say BB is the comic relief is because he has some of the funniest quotes ever. My favorite quote that he says in this movie is, Chicks dig his green pointy ears. <laughs> that I can agree with. But I wonder if girls will ever dig guys with horse like ears. Anyway, I also think Beast Boy's animal forms are really cool, and I love the scene where he sings the Teen Titans theme song at a karaoke bar. Next, we have Cyborg, voiced by Carrie Payton whom, a year ago, voiced a rabbit named Barley in Sophia the First, and will be voicing Wasabi in the upcoming Big Hero 6 show. To me, Cyborg is a really cool dude when he uses his arm cannon in battle, similar to Barret from Final Fantasy VII. Also, I think Cyborg's car is awesome, even if it gets totaled a lot in the show. What Cyborg does in this movie while in Tokyo is eat lots of Japanese food at a restaurant, which makes some chefs mad at him. And on the topic of this, while I am a fan of Japanese animation and technology, sadly, I'm not the biggest fan of Japanese food because my taste buds will easily reject it. The last member of the Titans is Raven, voiced by my all-time favorite voice actress, Tara Strong, whom I mostly know as Melody from The Little Mermaid 2, Bubbles from The Powerpuff Girls, and Riku from Final Fantasy X. Also, She'll be in the upcoming Animal Crackers and the My Little Pony movie. To me, Raven is a really intense member of the Titans because of how dark she is and she has a short fuse. But her demon powers are really great while fighting villains and while flying. What's interesting about Raven is that she knows a great number of languages, except Japanese. And mostly the only thing to read in Japan is Super Twinkle Donkey Gum. But that's not all. When Raven comes to a bookstore on the dark side of Tokyo, the shop owner gives her a book about Brushagun's origins. Speaking of which, Next is the prime suspect, Brushogun, voiced by Kiri Hiroyuki Tagawa, whom I only know from Kubo and the Two Strings. Before Brushogun became Japan's first supervillain, 
He was an artist who dreamed of bringing his beloved drawings to life using Japanese dark magic. The spell ultimately turned against him, and he was transformed into a being of paper and ink. Capable of bringing any creation he could imagine to life. Which sounds pretty similar to the Shadow Blob from Epic Mickey. But then, sometime later, he disappeared. However, the Titans find out that Brush of Gun had been trap wired into a cursed printing press at the comic book publishing factory. While Brush of Gun isn't in too much of the movie, it is revealed that he sent one of his creations, Psychotech, to Titan's Tower as a messenger. And sends a slip of paper with his name on it, which turns out to be a bomb in order to save Robin from being transferred to another prison. Next is the true villain of the film, Commander O'Hara Daizo, voiced by Keon Young whom I previously talked about in my blog of Mulan 2. At first, Daizo was very friendly to the Titans while giving them a tour of Tokyo Troopers headquarters. But later, things get weird when he claims that Brush of Gun is a myth. Why? It's because he says that Brush of Gun inspires more criminals. Later, it turns out that Daizo was the one who captured Brush of Gun and trapped him in the printing press in order to use his powers to create both the Tokyo Troopers and the criminals and monsters like Deck Mado. In order to gain a reputation as a hero, he even made Robin look like a criminal by sending Psychotech after him as a trap. Pretty similar to what Umbridge did in Harry Potter 5 by sending Dementors after Harry and his cousin Dudley as a trap. Daizo even sends four other criminals, Mecha Boy, Tomoko, Scarface, and Nyanyai, in order to spy on the Titans and later to attack them. And during the final battle, with no other options, Daizo jumps into the ink reservoir of the press and transforms into a giant hulking mass of ink and machinery with brush of gun at the center. The rest of the cast includes Robert Ito, Janice Kawai, and Yuri Lowenthal. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo is an incredibly awesome movie. Despite the fact that the villain's motivation is pretty generic, but other than that, the animation is amazing, the main characters are fun and action-packed, the action is thrilling, the story is interesting, and the music is just as great as the show's music. And it makes me want to get the full series on DVD, which should be delivered to my place next week, I think. And it's for that very reason why I give this movie the highest rating of 100%. Well, that's it for today, everybody. Be sure to join me again next time for my next blog. Mustang Power. Oh, and to all my Japanese watchers out there, sayonara! Titans go.